nearly 8,000 firefighters. 50 miles northwest of San Francisco in wine country, flames tore through parts of Santa Rosa, California. Some have described the scene as apocalyptic. Looking out at the Santa Rosa neighborhood, you can see why, as far as the eye can see, not a single house left standing. More than 3,500 homes and businesses now gone. Ash and burned metal. Nothing left. Although still under investigation by CAL FIRE, it's likely that at around 10 p.m. on October 8, 2017, power lines on Tubbs Lane in Calistoga, California, were down by high winds. The live wires would have sent a shower of sparks through the air, thus starting the Tubbs fire. Hurricane-force winds whipped the blaze southwest of the Mayacamas Mountains, fueled by this bone-dry landscape still recovering from a five-year drought It only took a few hours to reach the city limits of Santa Rosa, where as the city slept, it jumped Highway 101 and continued its deadly march through the densely packed neighborhoods of Fountain Grove and Coffee Park. I was working at Hillsburg. I was coming back at 11 o'clock at night. And I came in, I just went right to bed. The kids were sleeping and I was sleeping and I was just tired. I just never thought that the fire would jump all those freeways. This is Pastor Al. He was living in Coffee Park at the time of the fire. On his way home from work that night, he saw an orange glow in the distance. But at that time, it was still many miles away. A little bit after two o'clock, I heard the phone ringing. It was the the police department saying, you know, get up and get out now. The smoke was so thick that night. And, uh, you know, I was like, okay, I said, we need to leave. Fifteen people had already died as the fire made its way down from Calistoga and Coffee Park was just one of a long list of neighborhoods put on a mandatory evacuation notice that night. I opened the door and I was shocked, you know, and the wind and the fire was all over the place and uh, there was it, survival was the only thing I had in my mind. Al woke up his wife and kids and they rushed to get out. The only thing he had time to grab was his daughter's asthma medication. As they made their way through the thick smoke and floating embers towards their car, he suddenly noticed that his wife was missing. I started calling my wife, and then I heard my wife was knocking on one of our neighbors. He was about 74, 75. And all I remember, I heard my wife calling out, get up and get out. And uh, my wife went to four or five other houses. She went to, to knock on the doors. And I was like, man, get up and get out. And so she came in and we went. As they scrambled through the smoke-laden streets, the houses around them were already starting to catch on fire. Eventually, they made it out of the neighborhood and headed south on Highway 101, where they ended up pulling into a Home Depot parking lot. So that's where we hunkered down for the night, and uh, you know we were just waiting there until we see what we can do the next morning. Like many of the 20,000 undocumented people living in the area, Pastor Al and his family avoided going to official shelters. Immigration and customs enforcement raids and deportations are something that this community has to deal with on a daily basis and the possibility of federal agents at shelters made them nervous. Many folks ended up just sleeping on the beach or in their cars. When Pastor Al and his family were finally able to make it back to their house, everything was gone. You know, all of it, I mean, there's nothing. Uh, we looked around, you know, it was, we were shocked. I mean, all he said there was just stood there and cry. I mean, it's like, my goodness. Everything was burned to the ground. I mean, you know, the metal, it's unreal. And I think what to us was, was that my son came up and showed me this um, ceramic. It was given to us by a friend of ours. And uh, the only thing that written in the ceramic was Luke 137. There's nothing is impossible with God. That was the only thing that survived the whole fire. I said, this is the only thing that we're going to hang on to. And I guess that's, that's part of our story. So I walked out and I said, okay, it's the only thing I can hang on. And that was the only thing that survived the fire. Everything else burned. That was just a taste. To listen to the full episode, please visit theresponsepodcast.org or find The Response wherever you get your podcasts.